Ducks, rubber ducks, the perfect toy for bath time. Never put live ducks in your child's tub. Cause live ducks, live ducks will peck your child's eyes up. So always choose rubber ducks when you are choosing ducks. Hello, Internet. I'm Ren, and today I want to talk about Futurama Season 11, Episode 9, The Prince and the Product. This episode is a wacky anthology in the vein of Saturday Morning Fun Pit, Reincarnation, or Naturama. It had a lot of interesting visual gags and fun interpretations on our familiar characters and settings, but it also felt a bit rushed and disjointed with an overarching story that has a resolution I'd call unsatisfying, if I'm being generous. So let's get into it. Spoilers for The Prince and the Product and Futurama generally. We start the episode with the team making a delivery to the King of Space. We're delivering it to the King of Space himself. A real life king? This could be my big chance to grovel. It's a macaroni portrait of his deceased wife. My late wife has arrived. (laughs) Infinita, queen of space. Not even the finest macaroni artist could capture your beauty. Leela meets the king's handsome son, the prince of space, and immediately falls madly in love with him and his glimmering tusks, and they announce that they plan to get married. Leela, where were you? It's been like 30 minutes. I was falling in love with the prince of space. We're getting married. Fry is understandably upset. But, but, I love you, and I can't afford to live without you. <laughs> we cut to a parody toy ad for Windows. The Planet Express crew are reimagined as wind-up toys with the general story of Fry winding down until he'll eventually die. Fry's mainspring is nearly wound down. No! <gasps> Don't be sad. I've had a full life. I eated. I prayed. I loved it. I'm at peace. And Bender trying desperately to save him. You're my best friend! Promise you won't leave me! I can't help winding down. That's crazy talk! You need spiritual guidance! I love some of the visual wind-up gags, and Bender's determination to save Fry is really sweet. The bit where he consults Preacher Bot is pretty funny, and I especially enjoyed this line. You spread your wings and fly around heaven forever as an angel. (laughs) Really? And we can do loop-de-loops? Well, and this one. It's a metaphor for how the soul lives on in the hearts of those who love us. Metaphor? Isn't that just a fancy word for steaming load? I wouldn't call it fancy. The gang seeks out a guru, but Fry dies and Bender revives him, but ends up really, really dying himself in the process. Goodbye, sweet jerks. Bender, no! Now that's dead! Fry consults the guru, a familiar face, who tells him it's okay because Bender will be reincarnated as a different toy, and we see him as a plane, one that can do loop-de-loops. Baby, and I'm doing loop-de-loops! Although he immediately crashes and dies again. Ah, it's fine. It'll be something else in a minute. Back in the prince story, the space king forbids the prince and Leela's marriage. Marriage? I forbid it! She is a space commoner! And Fry is initially pleased, but when he sees how sad Leela is, he implores the king to let them marry, because Fry almost definitely loves Leela more than she loves him. No one is head home honeying anywhere. What? Why? What? Why? Because Leela's not common. She's brave and good and articulate. What? How can you stand in the way of true love, your majesty? Like, this isn't the first time he decides he wants her to be happy no matter who she's with. While defending Leela's honor, Fry destroys the macaroni portrait and eats it. I've never been so angry and hungry. She needs salt. My wife needs no seasoning! The king is enraged and challenges him to a duel, and Fry accepts. And if I win, the wedding is on. And if I win, your head is off! And we cut to a toy ad for Round Wheels, in which the Planet Express gang are depicted as toy cars. Again, seeing all the visual gags is probably the best part. I love the universe being redesigned as a giant Hot Wheels track. It's also interesting to see the different car designs for all of the characters. Zoidberg is being excluded as usual, and the rest of the gang goes on a delivery. There's a video circulating like the one from The Ring. Amy gets a call about her extended warranty. Your warranty has expired. Press 1 now, whether or not you want to renew. And when she arrives at the facility, gets chopped up. Fry and Leela also get chopped. The professor and Hermes cruise down the track to investigate what happened to the others. 
The physics of the round wheel cars are one of my favorite parts of this particular story. Hermes limbos under the choppy guys and finds out Zoidberg has been Frankensteining all his friends together to force them to hang out with him. He then chops up Hermes and adds him to the car, but he accidentally like ship of Theseus is himself off of the car, so he's still all alone as they zoom away. But that begs the question, where is Marianne? I get it if they had to recast Amelia Clark, but come on, I'd like to see her at least in a small background moment so we know that she's still around or find out why they aren't together anymore. I did in enjoy the horror inspiration for this subplot though, and it kind of reminded me of Dial L for Leela from Anthology of Interest Part 1, although I don't think it's nearly as well executed. I do also think it's kind of funny that this is the second time that they've paired turning a character or characters from Futurama into cars with a horror-themed episode, because they've already done it once before in The Honking. A classic episode that this one really doesn't come even close to competing with either, if you're wondering. But anyways, Fry and the King are getting ready to joust when Leela steps in as Fry's champion. Leela absolutely destroys her opponent, and she's thrilled until it's revealed that the prince was also fighting as a champion on the king's behalf, and she killed him. She's pretty distraught, but hey, we don't have time for that, so we cut to the final commercial where the universe is populated by rubber ducks and wobbly eggs. Fry and Leela fall in love despite being a mismatched duck and a wobbly egg, but their love is forbidden and the ducks and eggs go to war. Everyone dies and Fry and Leela leave behind two weird hybrid babies that wander off into the sunset with questionable implications. Like, are they Jamie and cersei or are they just siblings? After the death of the prince, Fry tries to comfort Leela back on the ship. I'm sorry you killed the love of your life, Leela. It must have been horrible for you but she tells him she was influenced by a spell. I wasn't really in love with him. I was under a spell. Really? A magic spell? No, a science spell. But they make up and we transition to a shot of the ship, which is also Bender to close out the episode. Overall, this episode felt a little bit lackluster, but it definitely had its moments. The toys were imaginative and I enjoyed the variations on the Planet Express ship to match the crew and that they actually looked like toys. But I think the overarching plot they inserted with Leela and the Prince was weird and confusing and a bit unnecessary as it just meant they had to try to cram four stories into the runtime instead of three. A choice that left all four plot lines feeling pretty rushed and underdeveloped. The end of the episode in particular felt quite abrupt and poorly explained. I know they had their incredibly flimsy excuse for it, but seeing Leela so callously cast Fry off felt out of character for her, even if she was under the influence of the science spell. Their romance was at least pretty consistently present in the toy universes, but the main story just felt kind of hollow to me, and I'm not sure who it was for or what purpose it was supposed to serve in the narrative, it just felt like it didn't belong there. I'm not sure what I was expecting from this episode, but it wasn't what we got. Among the various anthology episodes Futurama has done over the years, it doesn't stand out as particularly bad or anything, but I don't think it remotely competes with Anthology of Interest Part 1 and 2. I think maybe cutting out this weird Leela Space Prince storyline or somehow making it more toy-related would have made more sense and streamlined the episode a bit, but it was almost worth it to see supportive Fry TM in action again. He is best boy and we love him. Even if Leela doesn't. With only one episode left in the season, I admit I felt a bit let down by this one, but it was still imaginative and tried some new things, and I appreciate it for that. I always enjoy the different visual interpretations the animators make with this particular style of anthology episode, so this one almost justifies its existence on that alone. This was just another episode that somehow feels less than the sum of its parts, in that there were a lot of things it does really well, but it just tries to do a little bit too much at once and doesn't quite manage to stick the landing. But that is just my opinion. What did you think about this episode? Which Toy Story was your favorite? One, two, or three? Answer with either the ads in this episode or the Toy Story movies. With regards to this episode, I think the one with the windows was my favorite, but the Round Wheels episode is a close second. And if you're wondering about Toy Story, it's Toy Story 2, baby. When somebody loved me, everything was beautiful. Anyways, like, share, and subscribe for more videos. See you next time. Vita Zane.